All right, so you've been doing improv three or four years. Uh, what keeps you doing it? What keeps me doing improv? Um, the health of it. Um, I, I uh, my why has evolved in, I think, pretty quickly, I would, I think. Um, Do you yeah, say, it's just the health of it. Like, what do you notice, like, because, what do you notice, like, say, like, five years ago, is there something, like, about mental health mm. that's different? Like, oh, like, using your imagination makes me feel, like, not gray. <laughs> I like that question. Um, it's, yes, and, but more specifically, I... I love the collaboration of it because humans need people, we need each other, we, we are social creatures. And when you get up on stage and play as an adult, it's very vulnerable. And so when you, when another person yes ands what you, what weird thing or mistake or, or stutter or whatever thing you just did, it's supposed to be a gift. That's Jackie Arend. Um, I credit her for that saying is everything is a gift on stage. And when somebody use it, either mirrors what you just did or just yes ands and creates from that, it's such a validating feeling. You feel listened to. Um, and that's in my self-help journey in the past couple of years. Uh, which has fused with my improv journey pretty naturally, I would say. I've learned that listening, and when we don't feel listened, that is usually why we are upset. Um, even if it's just somebody cutting you off in traffic, think about it, that's, you don't feel listened to, you don't feel respected. Um, whereas if they had paid attention to like where you are in the lane and how fast you're going, that's listening. Listening involves all your senses. Um, and so it's just, um, well, I think we're all healthier off, healthier off. I don't know if that's a phrase. We're all better off because of it. If we listen to each other first and foremost. With improv, it's, it's weird because it's not, it's, it's a very nebulous thing. Um, it's just, it's, you know, with certain things you say, like, you know, with basketball, I'm going to become a better shooter, then, you, like, you, you make more shots. Uh, and then your goal could be, like, to make a team or make a whatever. Mm. Uh, with improv, it's, it's not really, like, a set place where it's just, like, in 10 years in improv, this is where I'll be. Sure. Um, what, do you, what goals do you have, or does it complement other goals you have? Yeah, I, when I first started improv, I told myself, this is the thing, the one thing I'm going to get good at. Um, I, th we talked a little bit about this where, you know, I've tried different things throughout my life, soccer, art, um, and I feel like I've had my hands in so many pots that I am semi good at a lot of things, but I haven't gotten to the point where I can be somebody's go-to or guru, um, in a subject. Um, and I want to be that for somebody. I want to be an expert in something. And so when I started improv, I decided right then and there that improv was going to be that thing. And then, so I had my sights set on being a teacher of improv. I've gotten there. I've achieved that goal. Um, although I didn't take time to celebrate it, but that's another um, thing. How do you say, how do you take the, the teacher mantle? Because mm. of course it could be also a need um, out of like a scarcity. Like there oh, is sure. no teachers available, sure. so you're the longest one here, or is it kind of just like you felt comfortable like teaching the basics? Uh, that's a great question. It was, I would say it was gifted to me by David. Um, he said, "Okay, you're ready." Um, but I, I offered myself to teach, you know, a couple of things for free, um, like our free intro to improv class, um, or a team that was new and upcoming. Um, and so I practiced a little bit here and there before he said I was ready. And so I think it was both. It was um, me taking up the mantle and then him also recognizing and listening to my, what I've been trying to do. 
Does that answer your question? No, yeah, I could just yeah. picture it. It's like, I like the way you yell at these adults. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to do a full time. <laughs> uh, that's, that's funny that you say that because I do come from a sports background growing up, and so I do like... Um... Did you tear your ACL? No, why? Okay. No, because it's like... <laughs> <laughs> there's this, uh, there's like this study that like since like female soccer players are really more torn to tear their huh. ACLs, it's because they're so much more qu quadricep dominant. Oh, interesting. Uh, and so like when they, it's like Anna, if you any every soccer female player I've talked to, like yeah, I've had that done, and it's just because like they lack hamstrings. No, uh, so was, my quads, well. So they're quadricep dominant and then no yeah. hamstring dominant. Yeah. So. I don't know. I. I don't think I ever had problems with my ACL. Oh, it's just kind of like inevitable. If you're in the, because <laughs> female soccer players are in the system for a mm. while, and there's this thing about these athletes nowadays mm -hmm. are so much more overworked because they're going to AAUs, uh, the camps. It's AAU. Oh, okay. uh, so like you're just like you finish your school league, now you're going to a travel team, mm. now you're doing this another team, and then like before you know it, the school season is. So there's mm -hmm. no time for rest. So they're looking at the ligaments of these NBA players, and okay. they're like the ligaments of a 38-year-old already, and they're 20 years old. No way. So that's why I was like, eh. I do feel like, you know, I do have a meniscus issue, but it only crops up when I am running. Mm -hmm. I was a big runner after I um, was a soccer player, or during. It overlapped, but that's the only real issue. I, I think it's because I'm light. I'm a, I have an Asian frame, so... Asian? Yeah. You stereotyping. <laughs> I am. I have. Well, what's funny is I didn't realize how small I was until, because I did literally, people would say all my life, you're tiny. Oh, you're so cute. You know, um, but like I didn't. Shih tzu. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see it. I did. I never saw it. And I don't, I think also I didn't feel it. I, I don't feel small. Right. But, um, I, it wasn't until I saw myself in photos next to people and and also when I started wrestling with David um, after we, we became a couple <laughs> um, that I realized that I am a small framed person. My bones are just small, like closer together, you know. It's not that I'm thin, it's that I have a small I feel, I feel similar. I would have liked to be said yeah. before, if you would have wrestled before you started dating. Just like, you know, he can beat me in wrestling. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I knew he was the one. Yeah. Because uh, I did the you same. check that box. I was like, uh, since I got held back a grade, I was always just mm -hmm. like a little bit taller and naturally taller. Okay. But I also watched a lot of WWE. Oh, so, so like, does you. Yeah, so I, I didn't understand like when I throw this person into the monkey bars, uh -huh. it actually hurts them. It, like, yeah. I, Interesting. Do you think being called like these titles, it kind of seeped into you? Like mm -hmm. you're always being called like you're so like a overachiever. You're this. You're tiny. Sure. So like if you gained weight or say if you didn't achieve, you're kind of like, well, I'm not the title. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think perhaps, perhaps because, I mean, my mom has contributed a lot to my inner self talk and limiting beliefs, right? Um, but also, um, hi mom. <laughs> Um, she, she uh, I mean, it's not just her, but culture in general, like, I, I want to be an actress, I gotta take care of the way I look, right, and so, um, I think I, I did subconsciously like being called small, perhaps, mm -hmm. I never um, probed into that. Well, yeah, I mean, nobody wants to be called big, I mean, <laughs> right, honestly, so. Right, I mean, uh, don't guys like to be called big, though? Uh, I guess. Yeah. Right? Just in what regards? I mean, if you're talking to a guy right. with love handles, they're not going to be that very appreciative. But if right. you're talking from a guy that looks malnourished, I'm like, oh, you gained five pounds? You're looking thick. Right. So <laughs> they might like that a little bit more. Yeah. 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 When did you give up the soccer dream? Ooh, that's a... That's a... Every, every person has to have realize... A kind of a sensitive yeah. topic. And not... And it's not too sensitive. It's just that, like... That was the first real dream I had as a kid, was to be a professional athlete. I wanted to go to the Olympics for swimming. Um, and then it turned into soccer, but um, uh, I gave it up. I stopped playing when I moved here. Uh, I play a lot of indoor soccer in Utah. They had, it's huge there. Mm -hmm. um, it's so much fun, but... Um, yeah, Mormons love soccer. Yeah, I guess so. It's 
wholesome, right? Uh, we, I, well, when I moved here, I remember when I, I, I made that one goal. It's all I'm going to do is improv. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I think that's why. I've looked into it. But it's not, for some reason, when you Google Im or how to get on a soccer team in Arizona, it's not as easy. It, Utah makes it very easy to, like, here, come, you know, here's our, here's places, the indoor soccer places, and here's leagues you can join. But here, I, I don't know. It was hard. Did you so just, I just gave it up. <laughs> did you have downtime in between, like, improv and soccer? Because I noticed, like, after I quit basketball, I was like, oh, I didn't quit. I just, like, okay. all right, I'm not going to do leagues anymore. Okay. Because, like, there was a point where, like, I got, I went to the basket, I got uppercutted, and then I had to get four crown, all four of my crowns chipped. And I had a huge laceration on the inside of my mouth. Oh. I broke my wrist. And so it's just kind of like this. I don't have health insurance. Yeah. So, and I noticed, I was like, wow, I have all this extra time and energy now. Cause, but I also saw myself living by care. Okay. Like I'm good at basketball. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so that's my, like, that's my dopamine. That I'm good at life. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. I felt like I was good at soccer. Um, I... Did it distract you at all? Oh, of course. Yeah, 2020 forced me to stop being distracted. But, um, and that's when I really started to give myself help journey. But, yeah, soccer, um, yeah, it, it's that natural. I actually stopped exercising, which is very odd for me. I haven't really, truly exercised since, like, 2018, which is super odd for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even know, remember what your question was, but yeah. No, it's just kind of like that, kind of like making that transition of quitting something. Got you. It's kind of like a relationship, and once you leave, like, you're like, wow, it's just, yeah. I can do... Other things? Yeah, it's just like, because you're not, you're not committed to something. Right. So. Yeah. I actually think it was good, now that you say that, I think it was good that I moved on from soccer, if you will. I think, I don't think I'll never not play it again, but I think... Um, I found other ways to find value in myself rather than soccer. Yeah, I like that, the value part. Yeah. Because there's a lot of athletes that go through mental illnesses. Or not mental illness, yeah. they're kind of go like Joe Kim Noah. He's, a, he's like seven foot and he's yeah. like a, this basketball player. His whole life has been being the best at basketball. Mm -hmm. So when he got to the end of his career and no teams were wanting him, yeah. he said he was just going through the shit like, that's what a lot of people like. They're like they're good yeah. at this this whole time, their whole life, and now they're not because it's just right. kind of, like I don't depression. That's all I can think of. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's super interesting. Where's your value lie? Mm -hmm. And you said you did other things outside. You said you did acting prior, or did you just try it for a little bit, a stint? Um. So, I guess I just tried it. I didn't actually. I wasn't actually in anything except for that indie film, which I didn't get paid for. I don't have an IMDb for it. It was just a. Maybe two lines, um, and then. I, uh, Do you know I mean, the two lines? <laughs> no, I don't. I just like it was something <laughs> like it was something like it's gonna blow or something. It was a, an apocalyptic film. Okay, I thought it was gonna be like, "Do you want soup?" <laughs> or "Do you want salad?" I don't know. There's stuff like. No, it's. I think it's also moving too. I moved to Utah. And I didn't pursue acting up there. Do you, was that a big restart? Because when I hear comics yeah. say about moving sometimes, it's basically like you're a brand new comic if you move to a new state sometimes. Really? Yeah, it, yeah moving has always been kind of a restart for me in different s aspects, different senses in life. Absolutely. When I moved to Utah, I had just... Or no, I, I <laughs> wrote a Dear John letter to my boyfriend who was on a mission. I mm -hmm. broke up with him when he was on his mission. And then... Um, yeah, I would sit, um, there's beautiful mountains in Utah, and I would sit at night, um, looking out over the city of Ogden, Utah, and I'd be like, you all are gonna see what I can do, or like, I'm gonna own you, or I'm gonna run these streets. I don't know why I was thinking that way when I was in my early 20s, but, um, I think I wanted to get, like, the, this new place where nobody knows me, right? I wanted to make a name for myself, if you will. It's kind of like that story when a girl moves to Hollywood. And I just like, think of like, but she moved to Arizona instead. So I'm like, <laughs> so it's just like a more affordable New York. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know Arizona, you know, 
had more stuff. There's more stuff to do here than Utah. Mm-hmm. And so I am grateful for it. Um, was this by yourself? That you just were just kind of a spontaneous... Moving to Arizona? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it was to be with David. Because uh, he had aspirations to open an improv theater here specifically. Because he felt like Phoenix, uh, um, you know, has more opportunity for improv and comedy. Um, so plus, you guys were together in Utah? No, we, we, um, <laughs> he, we started talking when I was in Utah, mm-hmm. but, uh, and then we made things official end of 2017. Um, and then I moved away to Chicago and then Asia for about six months. What part of Asia? Uh, China and Thailand. Is that yeah. totally different? Oh no, that's like, oh, I yeah. feel like that's not yeah. part of the conversation. But that's just not something <laughs> no, like, okay. I lived in Asia. This is like, okay, okay, that's yeah. cool. It is very different. It's just like, very I have a Prius, cultures. Apache helicopter, then I also have a motorcycle. <laughs> Wait, what? Are those the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, they are very different. Um, and yeah, so I moved away for a reason. It was to reset from my marriage I had asked for a divorce Mm -hmm. in uh, end of 2017. I'm glad he allowed you. Yeah, (laughs) right. Thank you David for allowing me to (laughs) uh, move away. Yeah, so we did the long distance thing um, until mid 2018 when I moved here. I could just feel like from like David's respects, like, hey, are you going to come back from China? Like, (laughs) like, what are we? You know, I think he probably did like think you know, uh, there is that risk, right? When, when you're apart from somebody, you're always thinking, well, what about me? Absolutely. But we, I mean, he's very secure as a person as well. And we felt like we had something really, really, really special. Mm-hmm. We still do. Do you ever think, uh, cause I always think of like, I want to live like in Europe or something just for like a year or two and see how that is. Do you yeah. think of just, of course you can't maybe now because of the business and just ties. You know, life. Do you ever right. think of just like let's go to let's go to Thailand. Let's let's like just yeah. try it out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's our you know dream goal is, um, and that was a dream goal in my marriage as well is to you know live remotely for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the business needs us. It's our baby. Mm-hmm. It's it's a child. It can't it can't feed itself right now. I think of like getting another dog. But I was like, if we want to go to right Europe, this is gonna make it really hard. Right. Two chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why it's better to have a cat. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What is the? Um, I forgot where we kind of. I don't know. I started Asia, so I was like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. like you're Asian. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have family in Thailand, and then my grandpa is was Chinese. Um, and Den- denounced it or something. <laughs> He's dead. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was excommunicated from his uh, race. Uh, he, I never met him, but I, I did try to find where he like lived and stuff, but I wasn't su- successful because, um, yeah, just language barriers and whatnot. But um, did you go to Thailand and China by yourself? Yeah. All right. So how does that, especially like, you know, you're a female in China and like in Thailand, and, like mm-hmm. you're kidnapped. I don't know the stereotypes, but like, what you, what were you thinking? Yeah. So they, my family actually almost. Well, David did call the embassy, or tried to find the phone number for the embassy at one point because they, my family and he thought I was getting kidnapped at one point in China. Um, or it's a movie taken in, I don't know. Yes, I think that is what it is. I think that movie changed a lot of people's um, subconsciousnesses about traveling solo as a woman. But um, I... It was because I was on a bus on my way to the, I was going to say the Grand Canyon, to the Great Wall, and uh, it's kind of, you know what, it's kind of the opposite, if you think about it. With the Great Wall? The Great Wall and the Grand Canyon. It's literally the opposite. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Because <laughs> one rises up. Well, I guess, well, not to the extent. And one but drops down. I feel like Mount Everest would be the opposite of the, of Grand, the Grand Canyon. Canyon. Yeah. Because it's natural. Well, and only because it goes up. Like, oh, okay. It's a, one's like a, but, but it's not a long, big old thing. So I'm picturing the, the Great Wall being a big snaking thing, just like the Grand Canyon. It's not? The Great Wall is. 
Oh, okay. It's like this big snaking like thing. And isn't it also no, it's not a natural wonder of the world. Never mind. Nah. No, because it's not natural. But um, anyway, so I was on my way to the Great Wall on a bus. And I was scooting over, and I had built in, I programmed this before I went to China, um, an emergency button on my phone where it automatically sends a text to your significant others, whoever you want it to, like to whatever numbers you program it to, but also it'll take a photo of, of your front-facing camera, through your front-facing and your back-facing camera, um, just to sh like send these emergency photos like what's going on to like and and it did and my family got a very flattering photo of like you know my double chin and everything mm -hmm. they were like gaga what's going on why are we getting this sos because that's what it's called it's like an sos feature on your phone um i think it's built into androids but yeah david started freaking out because i wasn't answering because i didn't know this had happened but um China is actually very safe. I heard the, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, the delicate, the food isn't, you are Chinese food, it's not Chinese food, like, I don't know. Not here, yeah. Well, of this course, This is like, American Chinese food. I went to, I was in Chinatown in New York, and I went mm -hmm. to a restaurant, I was like, bro, this, all of this shit looks disgusting to me. It like, looks disgusting. It's actually pretty tasty. Oh. And it's very healthy. I guess it's kind of like eating frogs. It's just, it's just like, we're not used to that. No, like, we're not. I just got udon noodles because I was like, well, I get, really? that, I get that at Costco. So I'll, <laughs> I'll get that here. I heard that the eating is not sanitary. It's just like, it's very, it's just gross. I heard like the eating, it's not like a, here's your plate. It's just mm -hmm. like, yeah. how, how is it? No, man. I, I feel bad saying this, but I do. It's just, it's just the truth. I like to say the truth nowadays. I have more of a negative stereotype of the Chinese culture than I did when I went mm -hmm. and it's it's because it's different I think it's because they eat in a very different way you know they hold their bowls up here with their chopsticks and they really just like shovel a cartoon, right? it's a shovel yeah and then that and then just like it is it's a family style table it's always a round table they don't have square tables over there and you just kind of like dig, as the as the table rolls around you take what you want so, in that way, yeah. And also, <laughs> they don't really have toilet paper over there. They don't? What do they use? Like, chopsticks? Yeah. Just swipe it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, uh, that makes me think of this one time I wiped my ass with pine needles oh, um, on a jug. <laughs> anyway. That just seems unnecessary. Like, that, just, <laughs> that just, like, there's no emergency. I should have just jogged to my car, but no, like, I was very, trying to be hygienic. No, like, I'm not like, oh, they're really like, that doesn't make sense. Like, there's no point where it's just like, ah, oh, geez, I pooped in the forest. Let me put, let me put there needles in my ass. There was nothing else around. Just like, I was like, how far were you? Oh, pr I feel like probably 15 minutes from my car. Okay, well, I was like, I'll have shit in my ass for 15 minutes. But it was like, not the pleasant shit. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? It was the messy kind because it's runner shit. It's if you've ever been a runner, it's it's the it's the runner's trots is what they call them. I don't know. When I run and I poop, it's like it's just like all right. Oh well, really? It's like this is nice. You like, just shake it down your leg and I don't shake it down my leg. <laughs> of course, I'm in a squatting position. Oh okay. Yeah, I thought no, I thought if you you made a, a funnel like yeah. sound, so I was like oh, okay, yeah, like, it's just done and over. Well, with. like I'm on a bouncy ball, so I'm just like. <laughs> Oh, you're on a bounce. Okay. So. Yeah, no. Anyway, they use, you kind of have to just carry your own toilet. They have bidets everywhere. They have bidets everywhere in China. Yeah. Did you ever, well, are you, did you ever like, Chinese, you have Chinese descent because your grandfather. Yes. And then I assume, did you just pick those two, like Thailand? Thailand is where my mom's side of the family is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, so my mom's mom is Thai and my mom's dad is Chinese. Mm -hmm. And so we, I, that was my third or fourth time going to Thailand, um, by myself. I mean, not the fourth time was by myself. Um, and so I was familiar. It's like another home. They are, the, the nickname is the land of smiles. And so it's very easy to feel loved over there. In Thailand, right? Uh huh. Not in China. No. It's the opposite. No. Oh, my buddy said like he didn't like China at all. Like he didn't. It's didn't, very much the opposite. It wasn't, it's not a second, it's not a repeat. Place. Yeah, it's not. Unless you go, honestly, I didn't get to go. The only real... Let me just rephrase everything. I want to go to that Avatar place. 
Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the last the, airbender? Yeah. Where, no, not the last airbender. The blue. Oh, the blue. People one. Where the these mountain things are just jutting out and mm-hmm. it's like covered in like trees and greens. It's, that's where I would go. I wouldn't go back to the city to Beijing or Beijing or... What was your kind of before leaving North America? Because um, I kind of feel like, you ever watch the Truman Show? Yeah. I, I kind of feel like, I don't know, a lot of people do that. I'm like, well, uh-huh. I feel like I want to go there because it may not exist. Okay. So, <laughs> what was your kind of before leaving um, North America? Like, mm-hmm. what did you expect? Was it very just, was it like just stereotypes because that's all you could think about? That's actually, well, I mean, I went, my first time was um, as a kid. And as a kid, I feel like, I don't know if as a kid you had expectations of things, but I didn't really have expectations of things. I would go into things blank slate a lot, and so I didn't really... And so by the time I was grown up, I didn't really have expectations either. Well, it's hard to... As a kid, I didn't find out about race and eth- like ethnic- ethnicities yeah. until I was like 12. Right. So like I went to Dominican Republic when I was 8, and I was just kind of like... Like, oh no, my buddy was Pakistan. I just thought he was black. You know, if you were a bear skin, I just thought you were white. I didn't know there was... Oh, interesting. These other things. Okay. So, like, when I went to the Maker Republic and everyone was staring at me, and I was just like, is it because they're black? And I'm like, uh-huh. but no, I don't know. I think now it's hard to not have expectations just due to it social is. media, and we have a lens to see how their life is. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, and, but I mean, at my age, too, I've been trying with my self help journey, I've been trying to train myself out, out of expecting anything, right? Mm-hmm. Because expectations um, let you down, in a sense. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know, kind of like doing a slight pivot and wrap mm-hmm. it up, got like sure. two or four minutes. Okay. Um, what is the self-help to you? Is it kind of just thinking to yourself or being realistic or how is it? What is it to me? Yeah. Um, it's mostly spiritual um, because I've, I've explored self-help, you know, in my probably mid Mid twenties is when I really started to be like, oh, this is you can you can change yourself. Mm-hmm. That the thing that exists, you can do that. And so I started to really get into it. I had a, a body language mentor and everything. I was like, and I, I would listen to podcasts like The Art of Charm, but um, I don't think I truly got it. And what I mean by got it is you like you feel it, right, with your whole mm-hmm. body, your soul. Um, emotions, you're, you're understanding it at its core, and I don't think I understood self-help until the spiritual aspect came into play, and I don't know how that happened. I think it was because I listened to a certain um, audiobook, um, which is um, You Are a Badass, mm-hmm. and then it's follow-up You Are a Badass at Making Money, which are both very... Um, spiritual in a sense she comes from a spiritual place and that's that's what it is to me you have to start very deep yeah so yeah (laughs) no it's just easier to edit it Um, it's like when you're holding still rather than it's just kind of like i really tried yes you did great you did great Um, (laughs) but um how do you think self-help is because um kind of going through like i guess i I guess i didn't do like the spiritual journey part i just Mm kind of like did a lot of i think it taught me a lot more common sense Mm. of being okay for criticisms being not mm-hmm. being insecure tools but, like ten, like yeah yeah practical tools yeah i never yeah i never thought of practical tools, but because when i go in the comedy scene now and uh-huh. there's all these people it just seems like they've never read a self-help book because they're kind of like oh this person's getting spots and i was like oh good for them it's just like right. just because they're getting a spot it's not taking away from me so i don't know if that's i've always been curious if that's uh, an Arizona thing is it the community that is toxic here mm. specifically, or is it, or is the comedy scene that toxic everywhere we go, in different? Well, you got to think like you got to have confidence to be a comic, I think, and I think when you do that, that's ego, and yeah. some people don't know the, I don't know, they don't know the balance of ego and then just like being real, I guess. Yeah. Uh, she's yeah. like, I'm the shit every day. So. Well, it's a fake self confidence. It's, it's ego, which is, ego comes from um, uh, insecurity. Mm. And then, I think we talked about it before, my fear was of just, like, inviting comics and everyone being like, I was bullied as a kid, now yeah. I'm super confident, and I'm the greatest person alive. <laughs> nice! 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's that's fake. It's not gonna last. Did you? Because I think confidence is needed most definitely. Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself needing confidence, or do you think like do you think you, there's a there's a finite amount you should have? Hmm. How is it? How do you like view confidence? Confidence. It doesn't come from ego. So. Um, like the comics you speak of, it comes, and I, and yes, I do need more, absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty self-conscious about the way I, look, I have internal dialogue that I could still re, reframe and fix, um, because <laughs> I'm not good at listening to myself. You say internal dialogue, are you mm -hmm. talking about just, because, I don't know, that, is it like, are you saying like negative self-talk, or is it just yeah. ways like, you just, yeah, negative yeah. self-talk, and I just did it. Mm -hmm. I said I'm not good at listening to myself, whereas I, um, I should say that I'm getting better at listening to myself, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it, yeah, it's, it's hard to find out what your limiting self-beliefs are when you don't listen to yourself, mm -hmm. which actually makes it very easy for me to meditate, which is ironic, because I can shut my thoughts off. Really? <laughs> I like that's what I thought of as yoga because people told yeah. me yoga is a phone because you're just focusing on your breath and your mm -hmm. body and it's just like the sensation of like oh my gosh my ankle feels so good but um no nah, but is there a point where you're just kind of on a the cell is it where is it better now is it was it what was it horrible like last year oh you're talking about like, like your self-talk and dialogue yeah it's better now mm -hmm. absolutely yeah I am um, last compared to just last year um it's hard to compare because i don't know um what i was thinking last year because i don't listen to my thoughts and so it's hard to come and i should write more like you it's um cataloging and um is so important and i don't do that enough but comparing if i were just to make a, a an educated guess yes it's better than last year absolutely yeah, I'm able to sit here and talk, and I think um, this is my way of saying thank you to you, because I think I'm sitting. I'm, I think I'm sitting here because I have improved my negative self talk. It's just coming full circle, if you will. Yeah, I like this thing because like you can, well, you can look back at yourself, say like in twenty years, just like who was I on December twenty eighth of twenty twenty one. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. so thank you. Yeah. Well, as far as kind of talking about like uh, improv, Thailand, mm -hmm. other countries, Mormon soccer leagues, <laughs> uh, shoot, if you watch this in 10 years, what would you say to Ooh. yourself? Just say to myself, not oh, it's just necessarily kind of like, like what advice. Question, what question would you have for yourself? Say YouTube is still up in 10 years, hopefully. <laughs> what question would you have for yourself? <laughs> uh, what question would I have for myself? Did you ever see My current the... self question to my future self or vice sure. versa? Yeah, or what do you want to say? I hope you still have this hat from Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, ooh. Okay, so my current self would want to ask... Mm -hmm. um, my future 45 year old self keep it simple <laughs> um, what do you love <laughs>